Got another question here on the year 13 rates of reaction topic. So we're up to number six now. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video. So if you want to try it first and then play on for the answers. Pretty straightforward question this one. So we've just got to work out the order of reaction for the two reactants, work out the rate constant, and then there's a little mechanism question at the end. So to get the order of reaction with respect to the NO2, we can use experiments one and two. You can see the O3 concentration hasn't changed. So what's happening to the concentration of the NO2? It's actually gone up by a factor of 1.5. And then if we put that over that, we can see that that's 1.5 times bigger than that. So we've got direct proportionality, first order with respect to the NO2. So rather than writing a load of waffle, you can literally just get it all in that line there. So from 1 and 2, the concentration of NO2 is multiplying by 1.5. The rate times 1.5, first order for NO2. And then to get the order with respect to O3, we're going to use rows 2 and 3, because you can see the NO2 staying constant. What's happening to the concentration of O3? It's doubled. What's happening to the rate? It's also doubled. So first order again. So the rate equation is going to look like that. And we're rearranging for K, so it becomes rate over the concentrations. Using experiment one, I always use the first row unless, unless told otherwise. So we'll put the numbers in. So we're getting a numerical value for K at 0.0128. In terms of the units, I've just changed the numbers to the units of the things in the K expression. So units of rate on the top, two lots of moles per decimeter cube, concentration units on the bottom. And cancel that with one of those. So we're just gonna take this up to the top and flip the signs. So we'll get the old units there. So moving on to the mechanism, I've just copied and pasted the overall reaction equation. So it's possible two-step mechanism for the reaction. Um, the rate equation, so rate equals KO3 concentration times NO2 concentration, that's telling us that in the rate determinant step, one mole of O3 reacts with one mole of NO2. So no matter which way you do this mechanism, there's various ways you can do it everybody must have that as their reactants in their rate determinant step and always make sure that you indicate which is the rate determinant step. So the way you can proceed from here, ask yourself, can you make any of the products of the reaction from what you've got in the rate determinant step? Well, we can't make N205 because we've only got one N, but we can make an O2. So let's make that. And then left over is a nitrogen and three oxygen. So let's just make an NO3. So moving on to step two, we obviously got to get rid of that NO3 because it doesn't feature in the overall equation. So if we make it a reactant of step two, it will cancel when we add the two steps together. Um, we still need an NO2 because we need two in the overall equation. We've only got one so far. So we'll make that a reactant of step two. Um, we've got the O2 we need, we haven't got the N2O5. So if we combine NO3 and NO2, we do get N2O5. And obviously, when you add those two steps together, the NO3s will cancel and we're left with two NO2s plus an O3, making an N2O5 and an O2. So that mechanism is valid. I'll show you one other way you can do it. So let's just add everything together and make an NO5. Not even sure if that's a thing, but let's just go for this. Obviously, it doesn't feature in the overall equation, so let's make it a reactant of the other step, NO5. Right, so what have we got so far? We've already got an NO2 and an NO3, so we need another NO2. And we haven't made the N2O5 yet, or the O2, but we can make it all from step two. So let's put them in, N2O5 plus O2, and then add the equations together. NO5s will cancel, and you're left with two NO2s plus O3, gives N2O5 and O2. So that is valid as well. 